Hello guys welcome back to our anime moments. Guys please like the video and subscribe to my channel thank you. Today is explanation of upcoming episode of Perfect World based on novel. So let's start. Shahao only made it through the tribulation with great difficulty. Just now, he almost died, being hacked by all types of lightning miserably, and only then did he struggle his way through, closing in on this precious liquid. One could see how difficult this was. If he was asked to do it again, he would have to carefully think about it, because it was too dangerous. It wasn't easy to remain alive. This process was filled with danger, how fragrant. Shahao relaxed. Even though there was lightning radiance in this place, it was far from being comparable to heavenly tribulation. It was gentle in comparison, unable to harm his body. The lightning pool was created from some type of ancient stone. When one touched it, there was a feeling of chilliness, as well as an aura of past time. This was quite strange. It was clearly in the clouds, so how could there be a rock like this that was turned into a pool within the blazing lightning? Even Shahao couldn't be sure if this was made of lightning or if it was real. Regardless, it was extremely mysterious, difficult to truly understand. The fragrance was rich, the sweet scent assailing the nostrils. Shahao had just fought until his body was half crippled, his limbs broken and bones about to fly out. His current body was one piece together with great difficulty, covered in cracks. He took a deep breath here. The sparkling purple liquid immediately surged, entering his mouth. With a hong sound, dense purple energy wrapped around him, so comfortable. Shahao felt his four limbs and hundred bones extend outwards, his body extremely comfortable. An expanse of multicolored light nourished his body, slowly extending to every inch of his bones and flesh, mending his injuries. The effects were too clear. He had only taken in a single mouthful, yet a layer of purple energy wrapped around Shahao's body. A purple cloud floated above his head, mysterious and unfathomable. An exuberant wave of life force unfolded here, thriving and full of power. There was a flourishing aura of life. Within Shahao's body, his bones were moving about, releasing metallic cries. These bones were recombining, carrying out an adjustment. They released sparkling bone luster. On his bones, all types of symbols would flicker from time to time. They weren't engraved on top, but instead flowing through those areas. Upon closer inspection, those were the patterns of the true primordial record. They flowed within Shahao's flesh and bones, flickering with all types of radiance. They carried a simple and ancient power. Shahao's flesh had just been tattered, so right now, he was recovering his wounded body, using the true primordial record as the needle and threads to guide the lightning tribulation liquid's vitality, allowing it to flow through every inch of his body. The second mouthful of lightning tribulation liquid entered his mouth, the scent like sweet dew. It flowed like jade liquid, sparling with brilliant multicolored radiance, making Shahao's lips and teeth shine with a hazy radiance. Fragrance wafted in all directions. Lightning, one of the world's most powerful offensive attributes, represented destruction. Some people claimed it to be the whip of heavens, one that could ruin all powerful individuals. Heavenly tribulation existed to control the nine heavens and tenth earth. The tribulation lightning could strike any living creature, so all clans had to respect it. Towards these types of sayings, there were too many insider details, so ordinary creatures couldn't know about them at all. Only the unmatched forbidden experts could truly touch upon this truth. It was precisely because it represented destruction, that the life force accompanying it was so precious, hard to find in this world. This was a type of miracle in itself. Death and slaughter contained a bit of the most fundamental type of vitality. If one obtained it, then they could naturally cleanse their body and become stronger. Shahao sat here, with each breath, his body shining with holy radiance. The purple energy above his head formed a, Tao flower, surrounding him. There were even more golden lotuses all around him. This was a type of auspicious scene, accompanied by a type of Zen chanting, ringing through these clouds. If someone else was here, they would definitely be shocked, and then be influenced, sincerely bowing down, carrying out a most simple and pure worship. Shahao was silent. All types of scenes flickered around him. He was like the most powerful guardian spirit in this heaven and earth, absorbing the worship of tens of thousands of creatures, chanting sutras here. His flesh was better, his primordial spirit, after being cleansed by the lightning tribulation liquid, became even more translucent, as if it was carved from a divine diamond. There wasn't a single blemish, round and sparkling, the light able to illuminate the stars in outer space. This was a type of divine scene. Shahao's injuries were better. 
with just a few mouthfuls of the purple liquid, his broken bones around his body connected, his tendons and arteries regrowing. His flesh shone with divine light, and even his hair was glowing, every strand brilliant. His flesh was originally already powerful to a point where he couldn't break through any further, stopped before a gate. Now, everything changed. His flesh released all types of brilliance, and then his body trembled violently. It was because blood was surging with great speed. He was undergoing a blood exchange bone transferring transformation. The instant Shahao opened his eyes, divine light was like a sword, sharp and forceful, but soon after, he became calm again, returning to his true self. At that moment, his flesh and primordial spirit had undergone a deep cleansing, completed a transformation. He was quite a bit more powerful than before. His physical body was powerful to begin with, but now, his primordial spirit was like this as well. After undergoing the lightning's refinement and precious liquid's nourishment, his primordial spirit became exceptionally exuberant. The little figure formed from primordial spirit took in and sent out energy, the clouds still moving with lightning from all directions. It already didn't belong to heavenly tribulation, but it was still being absorbed, entering the space between his brows to be absorbed by that little figure. Even if he were to face those that specialized in the divine senses, those with extraordinary primordial spirits, he could still remain without fear, able to show them contempt. However, he still felt as if there was further room for growth, as if he could improve a step further. He continued to devour the lightning tribulation liquid to strengthen himself, these symbols obtained the lightning energy's nourishment, becoming more rich with vitality. The true primordial record and 10,000 spirit diagram, at this moment, appeared. They were engraved within his flesh and primordial spirit, continuously unfolding, appearing incomparably clearly. They flickered like stars. Shahao sat there, immediately entering another deep level of Tao comprehension. After who knew how much time passed, he opened his eyes. The entire world seemed to have brightened. Just now, he seemed to have experienced more than a decade of time, reviewing everything he had experienced during his life. He then stepped forward. The true primordial record was now comprehended a step further, grasping the true fundamental meaning. The 10,000 spirit diagram was like the record of a war god, recording all types of scenes in the primordial spirit, able to be seen clearly, expounding the 10,000 spirit Tao, the most primitive, as well as what's closest to the source, Shahao said softly. His comprehension was deep. He touched upon that domain. For him, this meaning was significant. He was already about to enter the divine flame realm and ignite 10,000 Tao. Now, he felt like his own road immediately became clearer. Now, he saw another lightning Tao heaven. This was not something he could cross at his current cultivation realm. It contained great danger. He could feel that once he stepped inside, he would inevitably be turned into ashes, that is divine tribulation. Shahao said softly. In addition, he passed the lightning Tao screen of light, vaguely seeing a golden pool. The liquid inside was different from the purple lightning tribulation liquid. He could vaguely see ancient trees, a house, golden crow, dragon, and others. The scene was extraordinary. Shahao was shocked, but he was quite excited. Once he lit his divine flame and his own body reached the consummate level, he was definitely going to enter that tribulation. The natural luck there was shocking. He released a breath, not looking there again. That was not something he could touch right now. He brought out a bone cauldron, starting to store the remaining lightning pool. He only used a small half of the 20 square meter pool, why is it vaporizing? Shahao frowned. He discovered that when it entered the cauldron, this lightning tribulation liquid was quite sinister, part of it mysteriously vanishing, not being sealed at all. Why was this? He didn't dare act recklessly, because this purple liquid was too precious. Every drop was priceless. In the end, he carefully tried a few times, but this was still the case once the day passes, it will be the afternoon, a flourishing age will gradually decline, too far is as bad as not enough, is this the case? Shahao frowned. He thought of some Dao Chi Dao Lin told him. Once one reached a certain cultivation realm, not only did they have to pursue fighting power, there were also some simple principles that one had to understand. Chi Dao Lin had spoken about these things before. There was a third king who had obtained an opportunity within Immortal Ancient, and he wanted to completely seize the root of the opportunity, fully bring it away. In the end he went too far, causing his own body to fall. At the same time, Shahao could feel that the roiling, lightning Dao heaven above his head was currently pressing downwards, releasing a sinister and dangerous energy. That was divine tribulation. Once it erupted, he would undoubtedly die. 
Shahal nodded, but he was still quite shameless. I am still not perfect, my body having injuries. My supreme being bone was broken, needing nourishment. He raised his head towards the layer of lightning Dao heaven while swallowing large mouthfuls of the lightning tribulation liquid, merging it with his body. In that instant, the surrounding lightning rumbled, crazy wind stirred about, accompanied by a downpour of rain. The scene was horrifying. This won't do, I need to find the divine striking stone for protection. He felt that his body was currently undergoing transformations. He had to find a peaceful place. The great rain poured downwards, covering the world in rain. Then, Shahao moved. The mountain ground below was scorched black, many of the mountain peaks collapsed, yet the great rain couldn't even eliminate the smoke. Electrical arcs were still flickering about. When he was passing through the tribulation, it was so far from the ground, yet such a large area of the mountain region was destroyed. One could imagine how terrifying it was, holy shit, you're still alive. The divine striking stone flew over from the distance, saying this kind of sentence as soon as they met, making Shahao so mad he immediately wanted to beat it up, scaring me to death. The lightning tribulation just now was endless, pouring down from the heavens. I thought you were already turned into charred coal. I was ready to make a commemorative monument for you. The divine striking stone muttered. The emperor butterfly flew over. The scene just now was truly shocking, that area surrounded by thunder radiance, falling down like a silver stream. It left them so shocked they could only watch from the distance, hurry, bring me away from here. I need to go into isolation cultivation. Shahao immediately sat down on the ground, because his chest bone was shining, making his entire body extremely uncomfortable. It felt as if he was being bit by many bugs. A streak of divine radiance tore through the sky. The divine striking stone shone, bringing Shahao into the distance. They definitely couldn't stay in this place any longer. The lightning tribulation was tremendous, perhaps sensed by a few vicious beasts. They departed far from this place, descending into a valley. Shahao's chest bone was in great pain. The most fundamental vitality within the lightning tribulation liquid rushed towards that area. Was this an omen of the supreme being bone's rebirth? He was quite shocked. The precious liquid of the lightning pool was extraordinary after all, unexpectedly leaving his chest sore, as if it was going to produce something. However, it didn't seem too likely. It was because the other parts of his body felt a bit out of sorts, I already guided the supreme being essence blood to my entire body. Will I even be able to amass it towards my chest? He was quite doubtful. Sure enough, this time, it was a bit different. His entire body released a weak light. Of course, his chest was the most brilliant. His entire body seemed to be growing, undergoing some type of change. At the same time, Shahao felt dizzy, entering a daze, finding it difficult to even open his eyes. Sleepiness attacked at his mind. He couldn't resist this no matter how he tried. In the end, he collapsed within the flowers and plants, entering a deep sleep. After who knew how much time had passed, he then woke up in an absent-minded manner. Morning multicolored light was brilliant and large amounts of golden radiance scattered down onto this body, warm and gentle. The thunderstorm had long ended. Right now, it was early morning. The divine striking stone was hiding in the distance, carrying a look of caution. It looked at him again and again. The emperor butterfly was doing the same, what's wrong? Shahao asked. You are still asking what's wrong? Late into the night, your entire body flowed with undecipherable symbols, almost putting our lives in danger. The divine striking stone looked like he still had lingering fears I was tossing about while asleep. Tell me about it more in detail. Shahao frowned. He wasn't aware of these things at all. During this period, he took out some lightning tribulation liquid to feed the emperor butterfly. That stone was so jealous it really wanted to produce a flesh body to devour a few mouthfuls. Shahao carefully reflected on what had happened. This time, the tribulation was successfully crossed, truly making him much stronger, unlike ever before. He was now standing at a peak he had never reached before. Now, he felt like he could relax quite a bit. He just had to wait for the great battle of 3,000 provinces to start, using battles to test his accomplishments, the so-called Six Crown King is looking for me. Shahao revealed a strange look. This ridiculously powerful young supreme being that had been recorded in the ancient books appeared again, and he was unexpectedly looking for him. His clothes were white like snow. Six Crown King Ning Chuan was extraordinary. He was different from everyone else since birth, carrying a heavenly diagram on his back, his forehead carrying dragon patterns. 
That night, when he emerged from his mother's womb, divine light shone resplendently, heaven and earth as bright as day. Some even said that he might be the reincarnation of an unmatched forbidden individual. However, there were never any true examples of reincarnation, so this was just a saying. There were others that claimed that he was related to immortals, inheriting the foundation of immortal Tao, that there were unmatched imprints that merged with him while he was still within his mother's body, creating an incomparable great path for him, I came for the sinner's descendant whose forehead released holy light, sin, character scattering the clouds. The great Tao must be protected, cannot be blasphemed against. This was what he said when he arrived in Sin province. When Shahal learned of this, he looked towards the distant sky, in that instant, he seemed to have peered through space, seeing a white-clad great enemy that filled heaven and earth, blood energy overflowing the heavens. Great Dao rumbled, draconic cries piercing the nine heavens, waiting in the distance, boasting shamelessly. Shahal said coldly. No matter who this person was, how extraordinary he was, Shahal didn't fear him. Once they entered Immortal Ancient, they would fight decisively to the end. Six Crown King Ning Chuan already left. Sin province was so large, so there was no way he would stay within that region for a long time. Moreover, there was a rumor going around that there were other freaks of ancient eras appearing who wished to see Ning Chuan, Li Fire City. Shahao's heart was slightly moved. This was the information he unexpectedly obtained when he returned to Fire Country Capital and carefully asked around. The father and daughter who came from the lower realm might be in Li Fire City. The information was vague, but having a trail to follow already wasn't bad. Shahao immediately set out. He wanted to visit the Fire Emperor and Hualinga. These two had both treated him with kindness before. They had previously lent a helping hand, and they had also allowed him to cultivate in Fire Clan's ancestral ground. Fire Emperor had even personally given him advice. The great battle was about to start, so Shahao wished to be able to meet Hualinga before entering Immortal Ancient. Otherwise, who knew how many years it would be before he would have a chance to do so? Li Fire City was surrounded by many flame mulberry trees. A few thousand-year-old ancient trees were even more throbbing with blazing flames, the heat they released great. Fire Clan was founded on fire, a sect that was established through flames. Shahao walked over, arriving at the border of a large expanse of flame mulberry trees. There were people working here, picking the mulberry leaves to feed the flame silkworms. From time to time, great flames would surge. Within the forest, the temperature was not low. The flame silkworms moved along the leaves, eating the mulberry leaves, all of them shining with scarlet multicolored light. Symbols swirled about them. The silk these creatures produced was incomparably tough, often refined into precious clothes. It was a type of wondrous bug, and they possessed fighting prowess that wasn't weak. A few young ladies were picking the mulberry leaves to feed the fire silkworms. When he turned around without paying attention, Shahao saw a figure that was currently picking the leaves. His body immediately became rigid, looking absent-minded. That figure turned around, a bamboo basket on her back, its contents flourishing with scarlet multicolored brilliance, full of fire mulberry leaves. She wore rough hemp clothes, but her skin was white like snow. She was extremely beautiful. Hua Linger. Without any untold hardships, nor any accidents after falling into misfortune, quite calmly and naturally, they met each other. However, Shahao felt his heartstrings being tugged at. A strange emotion surged within him. Hua Linger was tall and slender, her eyes clear, naturally beautiful. There was sweat on her face. She did her work extremely naturally, as if she was just a normal worker. Her clothes were extremely rough and simple, but it was washed until it was faded white. She was tranquil and graceful as she worked. This was quite different from her previously lively and fiery temperament. The princess of a country was now picking mulberry leaves here. Shahao felt suffocated inside. He ceased to watch blankly, about to walk forward. At this moment, Hualinga turned around with the bamboo basket on her back, heading in a certain direction. Shahao didn't say anything. After watching for a moment from the distance, he followed along. There was a grass house, and behind it was the fire mulberry tree forest, in front a bamboo forest. It was extremely quiet, and also rather natural. There were a few tree stumps, natural chairs. It was just too simple, to the extent where it could be called poverty-stricken. She previously lived in a bejeweled palace, yet now, all of that went up in smoke. Ho Linga lowered the bamboo basket, and while carrying a cask, she arrived by the not-too-far-off riverside to wash clothes. She had a beautiful face, her tall and slender body began to work seriously and calmly. For some reason, Shahao felt even more sore inside. At that moment, Hua Linga's heart beated fiercely. That youth had a different face, but he had a similarly clear pair of eyes, as well as a similar aura, you are, Hua Linga heart trembled as she looked at him with a stupefied manner. He didn't want to cry, but watery mist appeared in his eyes, glistening as they slid down, it's me. Shahao walked forward. The cask fell onto the ground. Tears continuously fell from Hua Linga's eyes, and with a trembling voice, said, you are still alive. 
these words represented too much. From the fire mulberry forest behind the thatched cottage, a grey shadow pounced over, bringing with it great winds. It shrunk from several jong in length, in the end becoming less than half a foot in size. It fluttered its wings, latching onto Shahao's body little wolf. This grey little wolf was the wolf deity descendant Shahao obtained from the hundred shattering mountains, but later given to Hualinga to raise. After all these years, its sharp nose still immediately recognized the familiar aura. Shahao carried the little wolf while walking to the riverside with large steps, heading over to Hualinga. I knew that you would definitely live, Hualinga carried a smile on her face, but tears continuously fell, sliding down her cheeks. There was a true natural beauty to her appearance. Seven deities appeared in the lower realm, news of this spread to many great sects, and quite a few people of the higher realms knew. Hualinga came down from the lower realms, so how could she not pay close attention to this back then? She heard that Shahao faced the seven deities, but ultimately fell. She became dejected, unable to accept this. In the end, she heard that a youth named Qin Hao came up, Shahao's younger brother. This made her feel waves of emotions, thinking back to old friends. Tears were shed once again. The little wolf turned a bit larger, jumping onto the ground, using its mouth to tug at Shahao's pants, following him. There was a mound behind the fire mulberry forest. There was no gravestone, no coffin, only the battle clothes of a youth. Shahao's heartstrings were tugged. He turned around to look at Hualinga. Her face was covered with tear stains. I heard the news, didn't believe them, but couldn't accept it either. This was a grave created for Shahao, not too far from the thatched cottage. Shahao felt his eyes become sore. He looked at her, not saying anything for a long time, we were worried to death. Linga often felt depressed, crying. The little wolf spoke. It was the descendant of a wolf deity, so it was naturally unordinary. Shahao's heart was greatly shaken. Even though not much time had passed since he arrived in the higher realms, he experienced many things, always hanging on between the border of life and death. He didn't know that there was always someone that thought of him, silently shedding tears for his sake, Yu Huang, as well as the one whose forehead released divine light, sinner's blood scattering the clouds. As Hua Linga listened to him slowly talk about all of his experiences, she was extremely shocked. Shahao helped her wipe the tears from her face. He nodded, telling her everything. A long and drawn out bell sound rang through the air, spreading through the great earth. At this moment, no matter how far they were, all cultivators could hear it. Shahao suddenly raised his head. He knew that the hundred rivers converging into the sea, the great battle of three thousand provinces was about to start. This moment had finally arrived, you leaving like this, it's too dangerous. Six crown king, immortal palaces inheritor and others, they are all extremely ruthless. The moment she heard the bell sound, Hualinga knew that this world's most intense and brilliant clash was about to begin. Don't worry, wait for me to return. Regardless of if it's six crown king, immortal palaces inheritor, or other formidable individuals, if they provoke me, I will slaughter them all. Shahao said. It was just like in the past, like the moment they met by chance in the hundred shattering mountains, he was still just as self-confident. Upon hearing this long and drawn-out bell sound, when he saw Hualinga in her rough hemp garment, tears sliding down her face, Shahao's emotions were rising and falling greatly as well. He reached out his hand to help her wipe her tears. Hualinga's eyes were hazy from tears. She had a smile on her face, but also melancholy. Seeing an old friend again today felt like she was in a dream, but they were going to separate again so quickly after meeting. The bell sounds already rang through the air, the mountains and rivers shaken by its noise. This was the hundred rivers converging into the sea, great battle of geniuses starting sound. She knew that right now, all three thousand provinces were shaken, you will definitely return, right? Hualinga asked softly, a warm jade-like face continuously shedding tears. Her eyes were covered by brilliant watery mist, will return, definitely will return. Shahao said. They had just reunited, but the war bell sounded. This was reminding all who wished to take the immortal ancient path that the great battle was going to begin, why are you leaving again? The little wolf was unsatisfied. It raised its head to look at Hualinga, and then it looked at Shahao. Then, it chewed on Shahao's trouser leg, saying, don't leave, Linga has been quite unhappy these past few years, always hoping you could appear alive. Shahao's heart felt extremely weak, but his nose was turning sore as well. He looked at this previously lively and passionate young lady who had now become so quiet. Too much had changed. Hualinga lowered her head, stroking the little wolf's head, saying, Little wolf, what are you randomly spouting? The three thousand provinces genius gathering is about to start. This era is the last opportunity, so it is extremely important. Shahao has to go. When she lowered her head to speak softly to little wolf, there were clearly sparkling tears sliding down her clothes, landing on the ground. Her voice was lightly trembling. He felt a bit unwilling to part. Would they still meet again after parting like this? Who could tell? 
Once they separated here, it was unknown how many years it would be, what vicissitudes would pass. Many things could change during that amount of time. Shahao opened his mouth, wanting to say something, but what was he supposed to say? He truly wished to participate, you have to be careful. No matter what kind of competition, what kind of natural luck it is, it is not more important than safely returning alive. Don't take risks that are too great and take care of yourself. Hua Linga stopped him from saying anything and said these words. Shahao silently nodded. He felt warm inside, but his nose and eyes were becoming more and more sore. Those calm words stirred up his emotions greatly. He looked at Hualinga in a daze, and then he looked at that monument, discovering he had become a bit stiff, not knowing what to say. There was a girl who suffered alone, silently watching from the distance. It was so true, without any bit of ulterior motives, without any impurities like a crystalline sea, sparkling and translucent, warm like jade. This was something simple that was to be treasured. Shahao felt his heartstrings tremble lightly, a bit different from what he felt in the past. Apart from being moved emotionally, there was a reluctance to separate, as well as an even more unknown feeling. He had acted brash, acted wild, always shouting noisily in the past, saying how he was going to carry beautiful fatties back to Stone Village. This type of fearlessness was naturally because he had been influenced by the uncles of Stone Village. He had previously fought great battles against female fatties, deciding to bring them back to Stone Village. He had even come into intimate contact with the fairy, the pearl of a clan, but it had never made his heart tremble so greatly. He didn't know what the future would hold, but he truly cared right now. This type of feeling left him in a daze. Perhaps this type of pure waiting, reminiscing without any impurity, silent recalling of the past, this type of completely selfless act, was true beauty, moving his heart. Shahao's heart and mind were moving. This was a bit different from the past, not an attraction of appearance, not the haunting of one's desires, but a pure type of affection, how many fatties did you carry back to Stone Village? Hua Linga raised her head, wiped the tears from the corners of her eyes and suddenly asked with a laugh, one, two, three, Shahao put out his hand, seemingly carefully counting that many. Hua Linga gently pinched his ears. Even though she was still shedding tears, there was a trace of her lively nature from the past, in the end, they all ran away. I still have to catch them. Shahao said, laughing loudly, no conscience. Little Wolf was unsatisfied, unexpectedly howling a few times, forcefully tearing at his trousers. This left Shahao stunned. Was this a wolf or mastiff, you it's good as long as you are alive? Hua Linga said softly. Reuniting here made her feel that this world had become much brighter and more beautiful. The fire mulberry trees released scarlet radiance, illuminating this place with their auspicious and peaceful radiance, making one feel comfortably warm. Hua Linga's smile was pure, her face carrying tears. This influenced Shahao greatly. He looked at her, at her large and intelligent eyes, only, there was always a watery mist clouding it all this time, as well as sparkling teardrops around the borders. Shahao couldn't help but open up his arms to forcefully embrace Hua Linga. He softly said next to her is, thank you. Hua Linga didn't say anything. This place was extremely peaceful, beside them an earthen tomb that buried a youth's battle clothes. At their feet was the grey little wolf. The two of them stood together, creating a tranquil scene. This place was peaceful, quiet to the extent where the rustling of the flame silkworms chewing on mulberry leaves could be heard. The great bell sounded again, resounding through the mountains and rivers. It was clear that at this moment all those who wished to take on the unmatched path in the higher realms, the young supreme beings who wished to rise to the glorious peak, raised their heads, fighting spirits surging within their bodies, you should leave. Hua Linga said softly. This broke the silence. Shahao still had to leave in the end, there's no rush. This is just the selection of the immortal ancient people. There is still time. Shahao said. He looked at those eyes, feeling the reluctance, worry, as well as hesitation and loss. Indeed, Hua Linga was extremely worried, fearing that once Shahao left, he would never return. It was hard to say what would happen exactly in the great battle of 3,000 provinces, or who was going to rise up, who was going to win it all. Since the endless years, countless experts had been buried within, some who wished to become number one, but still met misfortune, perishing in the process. Even the ancient freaks that had previously seized the number one position, such as three crown king, and even four crown king, later on reappearing, but upon encountering terrifying opponents, ultimately died. Now, the ones that were left behind, alive, frozen within icy caves for so many eras, were comparatively few in number, but they were the very best, the most powerful. These types of freaks were definitely the most powerful since the ancient times, belonging to the most stunning category of individuals. 
Shahao wasn't in a rush to leave. He accompanied Hualinga, helping her open up a garden in front of the thatched cottage. They planted two small fire mulberry trees, and then brought over a brilliant flower to plant beneath the tree. When you return, it might be many years from now these two trees will probably have branches lush with leaves. The garden will be filled with brilliant flowers. Hua Linga said. This separation would be many years. Based on the speculation of the most powerful figures of the ancient era, once one entered, the shortest would be one or two, the longest needing several hundred years or over a thousand years before one can come out. This time was the last time the immortal flower would blossom. Immortal ancient will open one final time, so it might be different. No one could anticipate what would happen, I hope that you will be well, that when I come back to see you, you are still smiling as brilliantly. Shahao said. He felt a bit disappointed and frustrated. They had just reunited, only saw each other, yet he had to tread on another path. There was a bit of fear in his heart. He wasn't worried about himself. He just hoped that when he returned, he could see Hua Linga again. The hardest thing to defeat in this world was the great changes of time. He feared that things would remain the same, but people would change the most as long as you are okay. Hua Linga looked at him, don't worry, I will always sing proudly as I walk down my path, going to reach the most glorious summit of this era. When I come back to see you, I'll have truly transcended. Shahao was glowing with health and vigor. He looked towards the sky. This was ambition of a youth, he was going to ascend to the highest peak of divine Tao, not fearing the immortal, overlooking the heavens above and earth below, seeing through everything this world had to offer, willow deity, I am going to catch up to your footsteps, enter your world. He clenched his fists tightly, and then he turned around to Hua Linga. Wait for me. When I return, I'll bring you with me to see the wonders of the world. He was full of youthfulness, his eyes resplendent as he gazed into the distant sky. He was going to dominate all of his peers, become the most powerful. As time changes, the world becomes dazzling, many things will fade into nothingness. As long as you return alive, that is all that matters. Hua Linga said, her happy laugh carrying a trace of sadness, after you arrived in the higher realms, Shahao asked her. What used to be the princess of a country now wore rough garments, personally washing clothes by the river. This made his heart quite sore. What exactly happened during these past few years, this place isn't the lower realm in the end, Hua Linga said, when the emperor of a country from the lower realm came to the higher realms, in the face of heavenly deities and all types of experts, there was no way they would still be at the center, worshipped by others. This was the same as starting over from the beginning, having their former glory cut down. However, the father and daughter were still direct descendants of Fire Clan, establishing quite a respectable inheritance in the lower realm. As such, in the beginning, they were given generous treatment, granted an imperial manner and other things. Only, after the hundreds of spiritual medicines were transplanted and gradually underwent changes, turning into holy medicines, things became complicated. When more than ten holy medicines were grown together, who would not be moved? This was enough to make great sects' eyes red, developing greed. Many people had their eyes on them. Fire Emperor was extremely decisive. He was a wise and far-sighted person, directly offering the holy medicines and returning the manor to the higher realm's fire clan. He then brought Hua Linga with him, leaving the clan. In the end, the father and daughter arrived in this place, living an extremely simple and ordinary lifestyle, the glory, splendor, wealth, and rank of this world I've already obtained and experienced. This type of ordinary living I am quite satisfied with. It is quite enriching. Hua Linga said. Shahao nodded. Only after experiencing wealth would one feel that the normal world is what is more true. The most important part of an individual was their mentality, what about the fire emperor? He asked. Father has left to travel the world. It has already been more than a year since he had returned. Hua Linga revealed a look of worry. She then looked towards Shahao and said, you definitely have to return. Fire emperor is someone with great wisdom and knowledge, so nothing bad will happen to him. He will return. Shahao consoled. He then solemnly promised that he would rise to the glorious peak and then return. He left behind lightning tribulation liquid, and then he had no choice but to go on his way, goodbye, we will meet again. Shahao turned around, walking with large steps into the distance. Even when he was very far, when he turned around, he could still see that figure next to the fire mulberry forest's borders, waving her hand, her eyes clouded with tears, how many years will this separation be? Will it be hundreds? or over a thousand years, Shahao didn't know. His eyes had warm liquid, still unable to hold them back in the end, sliding down his cheeks I promise that I will come back. 
Shahao shouted loudly. He then rushed into the sky, disappearing into the ends of the world. Separations were always emotional, but one had to continue their path. Shahao departed into the distance, continuing on his journey. Every province was vast and boundless, measuring in the hundreds of millions of Li. The populations of creatures from different clans added together forming an unimaginable number. 3,000 provinces, if added up all together, then it was just too difficult to count how many creatures there were. For example, Sin province stretched 230 million li from east to west, 80 million li from north to south. Compared to the other provinces, it wasn't all that large, considered a lower mid-sized province. This time, just Sin province alone, the number of supreme experts who met the qualifications and signed up numbered 8 million. This was the result after several selections had been conducted, or else there would be even more. How could all of these people be allowed inside, immortal ancient? One has to understand that there were another 2,999 provinces. Many people knew that there were great natural opportunities in immortal ancient and that was why they all flocked over to sign up. The supreme experts of all sects, the creatures of all clans, for the sake of obtaining a chance of entering, used all types of methods. Shahao was a bit dumbstruck. When he came out, he naturally understood the situation. There were 8 million participating from Sin province alone, a number that left him feeling a bit dizzy. It was just too large, how bitter and desperate will it become? Many people will end up dying, he had a feeling that corpses would pile up like mountains, heroes withering away. Too many will die. An elder chuckled and said, Youngster, you are thinking too much. Could it be that your clan's elders didn't tell you that entering immortal ancient isn't easy, that only a fixed number can enter? Before one enters, there won't be a bloodbath. Are you from a sect? I know about these things. Shahao nodded, and then he said, however, later on, won't it similarly become intense? Chi Daolin was like an arm-flinging shopkeeper, asking others to work, but doing nothing himself. Fortunately, Shahao had long done his own research, asking around to understand quite a few things, Senior, I have to take my leave first. I still haven't obtained the qualifications to compete yet. Shahao turned around to leave. Otherwise, he might not have enough time, hurry up then. It will begin in two days. You really are taking things slowly. The elder said with a laugh. Shahao hadn't gone through the preliminary selections yet. If he wanted to participate, he had to have a token from a sect that identified him as one of their core disciples. Based on what Chi Daolin said, this wasn't much of a problem, easily obtainable. Sin province had many clans, and inheritances towered about. Now, quite a few of them had fallen, so it was difficult for them to produce especially powerful supreme experts to join. As such, these sects became the targets of a few individuals. Shahao traveled into the distance, paid over ten declining inheritances a visit, in the end discovering that they had long been visited before. Only after most of the day had already passed did he finally see a sect that was rather desolate. It was situated on a large mountain, Kuan Gate. In front of the mountain gate, there was an enormous stone that had these two characters written on it. This gate was quite old, the blue stone staircase leading up to the mountain long caved in front being stepped on. At the same time, it had declined quite a bit as well, being not much better off than supreme being Dao right. Several cracked ancient palaces were here, the only structures in this place. They looked like they would fall at any time, truly unknown just how long they had existed. In this place, there was only an old man and a youth. Aside from these two, there were no others. When Shahao came, that youth was about to run off. This video will end here. Thank you for watching.